16 February, 3225. According to the ship's clock, it's a few days past the one-year anniversary of the retrieval of my ship. It sure doesn't feel like a year, though. Relativity and all, I guess. There have been a few jobs where it feels like I've been stuck in this tin can days upon end, but most of the time seems to disappear into hyperspace. What for me is the push of a button and a few moments in which space is hours or days in real space. It really doesn't feel like a whole lot now, but if I keep this up, chances are I'll end up working for the great-grandchildren of somebody I delivered a package for a few months ago. A job's a job, though, so I don't really mind. Kind of thrilling, actually. If I live long enough out in the star field, I could become some kind of immortal legend to some planet cider I delivered a package for. I suppose you'd have to be some kind of massive backwater yokel to believe that, though. 11 February 3226. If the clock is to believe, it's now been about two years of real time since I've gotten my ship back. I think all I had to my name then was a hundred credits. Since then, I've given the universe what I've got, and it has rewarded me. I've got a thousand times that now, and I have an idea on how to use it. I'm going to part with the hopper. I think I've outgrown it. And I'm going to get something bigger. Something that'll make me more credits. I've got my eyes on a particular ship, and the stars seem to be shining in just the right way. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Pioneer. Pioneer. That's kind of cheesy, isn't it, these, these logs? Whatever. <laughs> right. and, you know, it's, it's nice to have some kind of fiction to go along with uh, uh, this more or less empty game world. So, yeah, it's kind of cheesy, but whatever, you know? It's fine. So today is the day we buy a new ship. Uh, it's time to get rid of the hopper and go with something new. And I've done some thinking. And I have a good idea of what I want next. And what's interesting is that I've, I'm in a really good place to take advantage of that ship. So, I have decided upon the Mola Mola. Why the Mola Mola? Well, it's a light freighter, so um, it's an upgrade in general. And because, mostly because, well, it's the kind of gameplay that we haven't really done so far. Right, a courier, well, we've done the courier gameplay stuff. We've taken packages. We've done a little bit of of uh, freight movement. And, you know, it's time to try something new. And a freighter is the way to go. And the Mola Mola, I think, is the one that I want. I mean, in terms of freighters, we could only pick the Mola Mola or the Natrix. But upon looking at the numbers, the lighter Mola Mola is what I want to go with. Gives us better jump range, uh, and more or less, more or less, it is, uh, you know, the same as the Natrix. So better jump ra jump range, and <clears throat> equivalent uh, abilities, I suppose. I mean that the lighter ship is the better way to go, for now, I guess. So let us purchase this Mola Mola. We've got a hundred thousand credits, so we can really. Outquip, uh, outquip, equip <laughs> this ship. Outquip, outfit, right? Outfit, not equip, or equip, not outfit. I mean, they're the same thing. Whatever. Let's buy the ship. Thank you for your purchase. Remember to fit equipment and buy fuel before you depart. Thank you. Oh, there's our xylophus. We put a lot of time into you, but now it's time to say goodbye. So before we equip the ship. I want to give this a new name. A little purple blob. When we can, I want to go to a paint shop, too. I don't think this 
station has a paint shop. No. So we'll we'll change the paint when we can. But for now, time to change the name. Uh, the registration number has changed too. So, let's see. You know, this is kind of fish-like. It's got these fins in the back. Oh, okay. I guess I can't move the ship while the editing the name. But uh, pretty much, gonna call this the Sunfish. I know. I know. It's particularly imaginative, imaginative, but whatever. <laughs> right, so our sunfish, the sunfish. Let's buy some equipment. Luckily, in this station we're stopped at, Anderson Dock, it's got military clearance, so it has pretty much, pretty much everything we could want to outfit the ship. The one weird thing about the... Uh, <laughs> military clearance is that we can buy up to a mil class 3 military hyperdrive but we could get a class 4 military hyperdrive at a lower tech station which seems like a bug it doesn't I don't know if it's supposed to be like that or not now, I've been poking around in the source code for Pioneer to just look at look at what's there. And I was looking through the equipment section. And for some reason, right, the class 4 is only available at a lower tech level than, than the class 3. And that, that doesn't seem quite right. But whatever. Um, right, with the military drives, the military drives are more expensive. Uh, but they're lighter, and they've, they've got their own drawbacks. Uh, you can only use military fuel, and you have to deal with uh, the toxic waste, the radioactive waste that's left over when you use that fuel. So, you know, they have uh, good sides and bad sides. But they're too expensive now. <laughs> no matter what, it's too expensive. So we are going to go for the regular drives. We're going to go with a Class 4, because that gives us a huge, a huge jump range. Uh, skip the weapons and the missiles for now. We're going to buy a fuel scoop. And fuel scoop is one of the things that I do not have a whole lot of uh, experience with. You know, when Elite Dangerous, you fuel scoop stuff from, uh, oh, you stuff. You fuel scoop fuel from stars, but in Pioneer and, well, Frontier. You scoop off of gas giants. So it's a little different, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to <laughs> work that. But a fuel scoop is useful for our Class 4 hyperdrive since it uses a fair amount of fuel, and our ship is now a whole lot heavier than the hopper was. So right, we can plan some scoops on the route, and save some money on gas anyways fuel scoop is check uh, let's get a radar there we go we could buy some other scanner stuff but it's kind of heavy so we'll leave that with that the shield well we have to we we need to see how much uh, weight we've got left not particularly necessary with uh, just trading I mean it's an extra line of defense but a shield does weigh four tons and we're already really really eating into uh, cargo space now All right we've used 30 tons 32 tons and we don't want to lose too much cargo so I think we're gonna skip the shield generator next up is atmospheric shielding and autopilot we could probably skip the autopilot but, you know, it's the last line of defense. Last line of defense. It's... It is... A luxury. And, you know... Something to use in case of emergencies. 
so what else do we need? We need some thrusters, our thrusters, bespoke thrusters. We have enough cash to buy those. And last is the trade computer, right? If we're going to have a trade ship, we're going to need the trade computer. So here we are, fully decked out Mola. Well, I suppose as decked out as I want to take it. And we are ready to go. The sunfish. Great. Now, we're also looking at something really nice here. Because just a few days ago, this report came up on the bulletin board. So during the great stream fair in the Gata system, an attempt for the galactic record in the biggest tractor pulling contest. <laughs> it's 3226, and they're still doing tractor pull contests. Uh, the biggest tractor pull contest ended in mayhem as one of the contestants lost control of his contraption, destroying all the other participants' machines. Okay, okay. <laughs> administration, it says, administration says it could spell doom for the local farmers. So what this means for us is that we can take farming machines to that system and make a whole bunch of money. So it's in the Gata system. So let's look up the Gata system. We're in Vethi here. Gata. Gata is only 35 light years away. That is relatively close. So with our hyperdrive, I wonder, how long does it take on a single jump? With a single jump, it'd take, well, only a week. That's actually pretty good. Uh, and six tons of fuel. But we are empty now. So uh, we fill up on farm machines that'll probably use a bit more fuel. But it takes a full week. And we don't want to take a full week because we don't know how long this... Um, situation in Gata will last. So the faster we can get there, the better. So we're going to take the long way, which is eight jumps. That's not great, but it's better than nothing. Now, we got our route planned. We need some farm machines. Let's see, farm machinery, 9757. That's kind of expensive. Let's see if we can't find, oh, that's the Gata system. Gotta swap back to Vefi. So we need to find a station here that exports farm machinery, get the best prices. So Anderson Dock doesn't import or export. Uh, Virag does not. Green Outpost does not. This is Wukowski Settlement. There are three land-based settlements here. Uh, what's this? Hunt Village? Nope. Gibson? Nope. Lamb City? Nope. Let's see. And we've got Iglesias' Rock here. Let's see. Glacius Rock Farm Machinery. They import. Kovalev imports. So that's not a good place to do it. But hey, look at that. This settlement exports farm machinery. So we can go here and we can buy some farm machinery. That's good. That's very good. How far away is it? It is... Oh, it's five astronomical units away from us. That's not close. But we don't have to warp. We don't have to go to hyperspace to find it. So that's good. So let's see. Uh, what can we take from Anderson? 
to make some money on the way. Air processors. It's a major import. We could probably make some money there. Hydrogen is not what I would look at. Military fuel. I'm, I'm always a little uh, cautious about fuel. Radioactive waste. No. And air processors looks like a good one to take. So let's fill up on air processors. Only 13 of them. Well, that's not great. But we can buy them. Okay, so there we go. Uh, 209 credits. Or I think. I didn't look at the price. Oh, well. Okay, so we are full of gas. We have some stuff to trade. Let's take a look at our Mola Mola. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. Nice-ish. <laughs> there are a whole lot better looking ships than the Mola Mola, honestly. But, you know what? It's our ship. That's what we're gonna do. So we gotta target that settlement. There we go. And let's get out of here. <clears throat> Ooh. There we go. Oops. You gotta be a little more careful there. Oh, only 4.8 astronomical units. It's a little closer than I thought. Yay. <laughs> So let's get over there. You know, I should save. Okay. Let's get moving. my prorate marker. There it is. What's it doing over there? So we've got a new ship. New cockpit. This is actually the the old cockpit. The Sinonatrix, the Coronatrix, and the Xylophus all have nice spiffy new cockpits. But uh, the older ships all are stuck with this kind of spherical one. It's unfortunate, but right. Nothing to do about it. And it's not a terrible cockpit. It just doesn't really fit. With the ship design, I suppose. star system, so uh, we'll probably have to deal with some gravity issues as we pass Vefi A and I think Vefi B. Okay, let's speed up. Alright, we're just about out of gas. We're going pretty fast though. 2.35 megameters a second. With the Xylophus, we could only go... I mean, I think we were lucky if we got up to 1 megameter a second before running out of uh, gas. Running out of Delta V, I should say. Yeah, so that's good. So let's see. Well... Maneuver a bit and then turn the time up. It's 
tonight as we'll get as we get closer we'll uh maneuver that uh prograde marker back up to the back up to the target but for now we're just gonna glide Here we go let's get ready for braking Break time. We are going fast. With the Xylophus, we had, um, what, usually the break time was a tenth of an oral unit? Uh, oral unit. Astronomical unit? Here, we almost got one astronomical unit to break. That's pretty big. Pretty long, I suppose. As we get closer, we're going to let the uh, braking meter come down a bit. Because this is a planetary settlement. We don't want to be too fast. overshoot or worse smack into the planet kind of tired of smacking into planets okay. ooh, 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 ooh. slow down slow down slow down there's Veffy B giving us some uh, gravity problems can kind of see the planet now. Uh, when it comes to planetary approaches, depending on the size of the planet, what I've found recently is keeping the marker, keeping the uh, braking marker at about a fourth or a third from the top, I suppose, is probably the best way to go about uh, slowing yourself down. Way, that way you don't have to worry about too much gravity. Size wise, I mean you can you can go higher on the gauge, but it really depends on the size of uh, your target. that meter down a little bit. And we'll check where this settlement is just as soon as we get that marker up there. Okay, hold on a sec. Let's check the body. Here we are. Oh, that's kind of neat. So if we were continue, co to continue in a straight line, we would zoom past Iglesias' rock, past Vefi B A, past Vefi B, and then swing around Vefi B. Vefi B's gravity would pull us back out towards, well, Vefi C and Vefi D. Ah, it'd take a long time. But I want to see where New Greenville is. I probably said that wrong. Now let's speed up. Where is it? Oh, okay. That's not a bad place. No worries then. Alright. Let's get back to flying. little bit more. Yeah, we 
still got enough Delta V to maneuver. We are getting kind of close though. Probably zoom out. Now I find that zooming out, zooming in, and uh, deaccelerating causes a lot of problems. Because when you're zoomed in, you feel so much faster. So let's speed up just a little bit. Okay. Only two megameters, megameters to go. Keep the prograde target there. We got a nice shallow approach. A little fast. But I think we're doing okay. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Slow it down a bit. There's town. Level there, that's nice. That's a dense town. With the uh Starports being smack dab in the middle of town. I can imagine that preventing spaceship crashes near the pads is one of the biggest jobs of the space traffic controllers. Can you imagine if something big came down on a high uh, entrance angle and just smashed itself into the town. All these buildings would go. Yeah. Probably think about city building in the future. <laughs> okay, here we are. Yeah, that was a nice approach. Let's turn on cruise mode. Get docking permission. See where is it? Ooh, <clears throat> well, docking pad seven. Okay, let's take a look at the bottom. All right, gear down. Flatten ourselves out. Let's put down. Perfect. Oh, that was an excellent landing. We're at the bottom camera still. <laughs> so let's guess up and let's sell our what was it? Oh, air processors. Yeah, we're not gonna make a whole lot of money off of those, are we? 35 credits a ton. Yeah, it's better than nothing, but it's not great. And let's stock up on farm machinery. See. That's 11 credits in difference. Plus, there's a whole lot more in stock. So let's see, we have to check how much it'll take. How much gas we need to get there to get up. Let's go ahead and buy 40 tons? Why do I have three tons free? No, I didn't actually sell all of my uh, 
on my air processors. Okay. There we go. So we got 50 tons free. About 40 tons of farm machinery. Which leaves us 10 tons for gas. Now let's check the map. See, uh, we've, our gas usage has gone up by one ton. Let's pick up some gas. 10 tons. All right, and it's gone up by another ton. So we have enough gas to get to the Ganarium A. Let's take a look at Ganarium A. So we're gonna, have, we're gonna have to stop somewhere to pick up some fuel. We've got a fuel scoop, so we can stop at a gas giant. Now look at that. There's a gas giant, Ganarium B. A. That's actually pretty close to Ganarium B. Well, this is a fairly small system. That's nice. But uh, we don't want to spend the extra time traveling from Ganarium A to Ganarium B, so we'll swap our target to Ganarium B. What's Zauzerad? Oh, hello. Ah, uh, brown dwarfs. Yeah, can't really scoop off of those. Oh, Zauzerad C. There's another gas giant. We could scoop from this one, too. Which would save... Two tons of fuel? Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'd need six tons to get to Gata after that. Two tons extra. Our machines, that's... Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Let's give it a try. Alright, so let's sell two tons of fuel. Pick up two more tons of uh, farm machinery. Check our fuel usage. Same thing. Alright, so now we're stuck at Zauza Red. Can't jump to Ganarium. So the gas giant was at Zauza Red C. Z Zauza Red? No. Zaro Red. Zaro Red. Zaro Red C. Zaro Rad CV. So let's adjust our route to Zaro Rad She. Okay. And with this uh, extra mass, it does actually take a fair bit longer to get to this to the Gata. Yeah. There's not a whole lot to do about that, but it's still only four days. So, right. So we are full up. On fuel and farm machinery. And let's see, where was the gas? Do we have enough gas in the tank? Yep. Good. Okay. So let's give ourselves another save. And then we'll head off to Zauz Zauzarad. Zar Zarorad. Zarorad. Well we will where we will attempt to refuel.